Yeah, good morning and welcome to the Digitalization of Culture Congress, our last day. Today we have our guests like at the first day, um, Elisabeth Thielen and Sophie Sauer. Uh, you are in Germany at the moment. Schauer, sorry, that was the wrong name, correct? <laughs> Yes, that's correct. Good morning, Bertha. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good morning. Unfortunately, we're not in Namibia anymore, but in cold and wet Berlin. But, uh, yeah, we would still like to present you a few things uh, with augmented reality and Namibian Living Children's Book. And with us, mm -hmm. also have Professor Jürgen Sie, who uh, you saw presenting. Yeah, good morning. Last week. Good morning, Bertha. Nice to yeah. see you. Yeah, great. Last day of the conference. And yeah, what is your subject today? Yeah, maybe first a few things about us. We are all researchers and one professor from the HTW in Berlin. And in 2019, we had a small project with the Goethe Institute in Windhoek, where we took six different Namibian uh, children's book, books and tried to augment them and enrich them using the technology we use every day in our research, which is augmented reality. And uh, yeah, this was very successful. And we would like to show you some of the things we did back then and also uh, guide you through how you would augment your own living children's book. So uh, let me- Maybe start. tell Mr. Ziki, Mr. Ziki makes too much noise at the background. Just <laughs> <laughs> You have to stay there now. You can't move anymore. Yeah, unfortunately the floor in this uh, conference room is a bit noisy. Okay, uh, let me share my screen with audio. Okay. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, perfect. Okay. Yeah, um, as we mentioned, we had a little project in the Goethe Institute in Windhoek in 2019. It was uh, yeah, thank you with Detlef Pfeiffer from the Goethe Institute. We were from HCW Berlin and brought a few students and uh, most students came from NAS Namibia. So this was a cooperation project. And uh, yeah, we augmented six different Nubian children's books. And the title of this uh, collaboration was called Living Children's Books because using augmented reality, they came to life and you could experience the book a bit more. And uh, the book that we will be using today to augment is Ndati's Day Out um, from the Yambeka Children's um, uh, publisher. publisher. Thank you, Jürgen. And uh, yeah, Heavy Tenge kindly uh, told us that we could use this book. So thank you for this. Okay, let's start first of all with the project concept. Um, the coding week in 2019 had the simple um, premise that you had a book and you use your smartphone, point this at the book and then augmented reality <clears throat> content is happening on the smartphone and you can see animations, movies, pictures and even little games. And these were some of the books that we used it was the Dancing Tortoise and the Sun Hunters of the Kalahari, Mina and the Magic Baobab Tree and two of the Benny books. And each group consisted of one German and three to five Namibian students. And they formed a group in order to make the augmentation in uh, unity and work together to create one uh, application each. They had uh, three or four days during one week in Namibia. And yeah, some of the results are on the next pages. First of all, Mina and the Magic Baobab Tree. You can see on the right, the concept was that you put switch the character and have them wear different clothing. So you see on the smartphone, the Mina character is a bit enhanced and there are some arrows pointing left and right, which uh, show that you can select a different hat or different shoes for Mina, the character. And you can see the small flags at the bottom. You could also choose which language you want the application to run in. So either English or German, depending on which you understand best. And then when you scan uh, the pages of Mina, you see the character you chose and you see, yeah, you so you directly influence the story and have your own character living through the story. 
One other book was The Dancing Tortoise and the Sun Hunters of the Kalahari. The concept there was that this was actually the group that I was in. And we happened to be in the position that we had four different languages in our group. So one of us was Portuguese. Um, every one of us spoke English. I could speak German. And uh, one of us could also speak Oshiwambo. So we thought, OK, we have these four different languages. So using AR, we could have the book read in each of this language, depending on which language the child knows best. So when you first open the application, you choose the language you want. So you can choose English or choose Oshiwambo, Portuguese or German. And then, uh, yeah, the book is read to you in the, the, the language that you chose. And since it was uh, a traditional tale with some of uh, the Oshiwambo pronunciation and words, we also introduced a pronunciation guide because, for example, I could, I was not able to pronounce uh, um, them like my team members could. So yeah, we made a pronunciation guide you see on the second screen. And by pressing the play button, uh, the correct pronunciation is played to you. And uh, the right is a video. Let's see if this goes. So you see, if you're choosing the language, Oshibambu, and now I'm pointing the smartphone at the marker. And you see the, yeah, the book is animated a bit, so it's, it comes to life. And yeah, the audio is in Oshibambo from one of my team members reading the book in Oshibambo. Yeah, the next book was the Benny 4 book. Um, with Benny 4 and Benny 3, I unfortunately only have this one video, but the Benny 4 group um, made the book into a coloring book so that you could actually color in the book in augmented reality. So each ch child could color the book differently without the book actually being uh, destroyed, so to say. So everyone had a clean book to work with and in augmented reality, the kids could have fun and color in all the pages as uh, however they wanted. And for this Benny 4 book, they made a short demonstration video on the front page. So in the video, you see me scanning the front page of the book using the application. And then one of the team members uh, explains what is happening in the book. The book Benny, The Little World of Peace Without Diary by Albert Gatenhausen deals with the situation of wild animals during drought. Benny, the little elephant, helps the little weak world of peace. The little world of peace is so happy about yeah, okay. I guess you can imagine how it continues. Yeah, as I said, this one was the book they did the live coloring in. You see, it's a gray book and you could fill out all the pages and all the colors you want. For the technology we used during this coding week, we used Unity and Euphoria. There are other augmented reality SDKs, but with Euphoria, you can very quickly create your own uh, augmentation, which we will show you later on the example of Indati Stay Out. So we used uh, Unity, which is a game engine, which means we can build our little scenes and games just like you would for any other traditional game. And as mentioned, the Euphoria SDK is used for marker detection. So we upload a defined set of markers to the developer portal that Euphoria offers. And then Euphoria creates a database with all the feature points that are used uh, for the detection. We can download that and import that in Unity. So if we have the database in Unity, then whenever the application is running and the camera is turned on, the Euphoria SDK checks the camera stream for, um, yeah, for similarities with the markers. So they check, okay, does the image in the camera now fit with the, one of the images in the marker database? And if that is the case, then augmented reality content um, is placed onto the marker when using a smartphone. Yeah, we will now do a short demo. Um, Ndati's Day Out is a book about um, Ndati who first goes out in the world because her grandma was always very protective. And when going out in the world, she discovers a little gecko. And um, yeah, at the end shows it to her grandma and is very happy about the nature that she discovered. And um, yeah, we wanted to implement the audio recording uh, of the voices as well. So Sophie used a uh, online tool to yeah. do that. And first of all, she will show us that and then take us through the Unity project that we developed. Okay. 
Um, yes, like uh, Elizabeth said, so we um, I used a uh, free web tool um, where you can type in text and then you have different languages to choose from and you can convert the text to speech and then download the mp3 uh, da uh, data. So for example, hello. Yeah, so this is a very uh, simple. Um, and so I um, I wrote all the text from the pages in here and then downloaded it. And so now we want to show you the um, Unity project. So it's a pretty simple uh, scene. We have the AR camera. Um, you add this by just simply, when you have the Euphoria SDK installed, you have this option here, and then you can add uh, simply the AR camera with the uh, scripts and everything. And uh, then you have different uh, image targets. These targets you also add by clicking here and then image target. And then, so, uh, and then here you have different um, yeah, settings for where you get your image target from. So for example, you could se select a simple image here <coughs> or you go to uh, from database. And then we have here um, the, uh, the database that we uh, created and the different uh, image targets we have selected on or we, that we added to the database. I can show you the database. It's here uh, on the Euphoria uh, webpage. And here we have all the um, images from the, from the book pages. And you can also see um, there's a ranking. So how good the pages are uh, suitable for, uh, like as a marker. And you can see like some pages are better suited than others. Um, and so when you have the image targets here, and then we have a plane on them with, the, um, with a play button and a play button behavior script. Um, which is just a simple, like by clicking, you will um, play in the audio. So the audio that we just created from the web tool, and then by clicking again, um, it will pause the audio. And, and then on one page, we have a little game. Um, because in the book, uh, Ndati, uh, she's going out, in the world and um, she wants to collect these fruit plums and we have just a simple game where you can um, like put these fruits into a basket and then we also have on another page where she uh, where she finds the the gecko we have added this like little gecko model and yeah that's basically all that is to this um, to our little application and we can now show you a little demo. Mm, yeah, just. Uh, we just need to delete uh, all the things that I just added. So we have the um, the PDF file on the phone. And then, yeah, there's the play button. <laughs> If I can press it. Yeah, it's a bit difficult if you don't uh, have it on paper. It says play in here. Okay, live coding, live errors. <laughs> so you see here that the script is saying play, but well, we don't hear any. Page number two is not playing anything. Page number two is this audio. 
I'm not sure if Zoom plays the audio though. It should, right? Okay, okay, I guess we will just uh, show you the audio source yeah. like this. We'll see if it plays here. It won't. Okay, I guess we have some problems with the audio source, maybe. Let's try another audio. Okay, apparently Trinity does not want to play my audio. Okay, but, yeah. like every good developer, we just restart our engine. <laughs> yeah, a little bit too, sorry to just uh, interrupt you. I just uh, was thinking about now we have life a problem. And what are you looking at it? Where are you looking first when a problem like this appeared? <laughs> Maybe you give the answer already. Just restart the program. Is that the first step or how do you go? Uh, well, with, that's uh, what we take when, when an error doesn't make a lot of sense because no. you see here we have the audio and with this button over here we can play. Gatti was yeah. a little girl who lived in a village with her um, grand and like just before the play button wasn't working which does not make yeah. a lot of sense because this is just playing an audio file from the file system so let's try again in ar that's uh yeah sometimes unity it's it's a really great tool but sometimes it has really interesting errors and bugs so sometimes just restarting is the best option so now we'll try again Gati was a little girl who lived in a village with her granny. Her granny loved her so much, she would hardly ever let her go play out of her sight. Gati barely knew the world outside her house. So that was the first page. Hmm. One beautiful afternoon, she asked granny if she could go and collect a few bird plums. Yes, you can go, but don't go far, replied Granny. Mm -hmm. So this is pages where only audio happens. And then for example, on this page, she finds fruits on the floor and wants to collect them. So there's audio. The ground was completely yellow from all the bird plums had fallen. With excitement, she picked them up one by one and placed them in her basket. Yeah, so like this, we can just place those little orange plums in the basket. And uh, ideally at the end, there should be a message like, thank you for helping, but uh, maybe that's coming in the next version. And now we must go on right there. So maybe we can show you the Gecko page as well. Mm -hmm. Gecko was on page six, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, there he is. So this is just a little free 3D model of a gecko and also some audio. It's a bit fiddly trying to do this in the editor. It works easier if you have the application on your smartphone and have the book uh, at home in order to just scan the pages. Where you can, we can show you um, the, we have here a QR code um, where you can download the app. And then you have also the um, some uh, PDF files from the, I think four pages from the book, or you can go to the Goethe Institute and um, look at the book there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try it for yourself. And uh, if you like it and you have any recommendations what we else could add to the program, then please let us know. Maybe we can uh, do a new version. But uh, yeah, for now, thank you for uh, 
listening. And if you have any questions, please ask. Yes, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, first of all, um, it was quite exciting to see how that works and click there and click there and something get alive. Yeah, you're uh, a bit uh, low on volume, Detlef. I'm low on volume. Let me see. Do you have your mic on? So is it better now? Yes. Okay. No, I said thank you very much for the demonstration. And um, it was very interesting to see um, when you click day in day what happens. <laughs> I was I was also um, surprised by the by the uh, software what what is it called voice maker yeah it's really voice cool voice it's also completely free yeah mm. i mean there I are some, there are some like premium voices or um, where you can like select um, i don't know maybe more realistic voices and then you have to pay for them but other like most of the voices and languages are free so i guess yeah. um, Maybe you can sh uh, stop the screen sharing. Mm -hmm. yes. I already mean. saw there's two yeah. questions about where to buy the book. Uh, it's yeah, the I'll... Jamaica Children's Publisher, so um, I guess. Yeah, that you... by Helvi Itenga, or you can buy it actually at any bookstore, especially also at the book market in um, in Windhoek at the so-called Grüner Kranz. There you can buy it, but I think at other bookstores they are available as well. Yeah, um, you were talking about augmented reality. Um, that means um, to to play this app around, you you need to book physically. You can't the app alone. You can't. No, you uh, need the market. You can have them on the screen like we did because we don't have the printed version, but um, yeah, you need the markers because the smartphone checks in the camera stream for um, mm. the markers. Mm. You can't activate the mm. content without the marker being recognized. So basically you need you need to book. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. which is a good thing because um, this can, so augmented reality can be used for marketing purposes and mm. you say, okay, mm. we have this free augmented reality app that you can use, but you will have to buy the book. Mm. So uh, thereby hopefully increasing book sales if people want mm. to use the application. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that means the, um, the download you showed us uh, at the end, it is, it is, it is not on the app store. Uh, no, unfortunately not. Yeah. There are some loopholes mm. that you would have to go through if you want to bring an app to the App Store, uh, especially mm. for iOS. Um, yeah, this could be an idea for the future, but then we would have to discuss this with uh, Helvi and uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, so and there is, a, I think there is a quite a lot of administration and also fees involved. No? Yeah. So when you, but when you, um, you. Right at the end, you showed this QR code. What mm -hmm. can you do with the QR code? Again, please, can you explain? Uh, the QR code is a link to our cloud. And uh, yeah, we have mm -hmm. the PDF of the markers. I guess I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Let me do that again. So can you see here? This is uh, the folder in yeah. the yeah. cloud. So the link uh, points directly here. And we have one markers.pdf, which includes the four pages we showed in the demonstration. Of course, not the whole book, yeah. because uh, we still yeah. want uh, people to buy here this book. And yeah. here, the .apk file is the installation file for Android. So you download mm -hmm. that onto your Android smartphone, and then in the file manager, you click on the .apk, and it will automatically install the application on your phone. Yeah, okay. You can use it like any other application. Okay, okay. Um, I've got some question in the chat and in the uh, Q&A session. Mm -hmm. um, the one just fits to that where you are. The, um, is is the uh, is this is the, no is there an iOS version meaning for for Apple, or mm -hmm. that only work on Android? 
Um, well, the good thing about Unity is that we don't have to build two separate applications. So we can, from Unity, create either a Android file or a uh, iOS application. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. the iOS application can only be distributed by either plugging uh, a phone into my computer, Sophie's, or uh, it being published on the App Store, which uh, yeah we couldn't do. And we also can't ask people mm -hmm. to come to Brandenburg and plug, plug their phones into our laptops. So mm -hmm. yeah, Android mm -hmm. is far easier in that regard, as that you can just send them the .apk file and people can install. Yeah. Okay. Um... So whatever two other people want to know where to, where to buy the book that we answered already. And another question is, uh, does this work for any book or just specific ones? No, we could use most of uh, the books out there. It uh, doesn't work if the pages are too similar or if there's not enough shapes on the page. So for example, if it's just a, a book where each uh, page is one solid color, then it won't uh, it won't work because the color is uh, irrelevant for Vaporia. It just checks for little edges and uh, nooks in the, uh, in the marker. Mm -hmm. That's also uh, what I uh, showed you on in the database. So some uh, markers had a better ranking because they had more shapes and more uniqueness to them than mm. other pages. Mm, okay, okay. So, but you can do it with any book, actually. Must, must, um, <laughs> but it must be um, some. There must be some pictures only with, for example, with the textbook. Um, Will that work with the textbook? Not, not that well, because. Um, while you could use uh, OCR in order to recognize the text with uh, yeah with a smartphone, the marker checks for different things. So it might work on two or three separate text pages, but if you've got like ten of them, then the marker might get misrecognized. So the smartphone might say, "Oh, this is page ten of uh, mm. your book," in, but it's actually page three because mm. it's similar. Mm. Yeah. So and then. Um... You showed us two tools, Un uh, Unity and Vuforia. Um, in one sentence, Vuforia was for what and Unity was for what again? That was a bit, um, yeah, for those they are not from the, uh, from the field, maybe a bit uh, difficult to understand at the first step. Um, what does Vuforia do and what does Unity do? Can you <laughs> make that? Uh, yeah. yeah. So Euphoria is just for the marker recognition. So Euphoria is an augmented reality SDK, which means it has like scripts to recognize markers. And Unity is a game engine. So Unity is uh, used to build traditional games that you could play on your computer or your smartphone. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it offers uh, 3D environment and you can place uh, game objects and you already have some things like the audio sources you don't have to code an audio source yourself you just use the unity audio source component and just put mm -hmm. an audio clip in there so it takes yeah. quite a bit of work off of us and also you can uh, yeah create ios and android in the same way which is mm -hmm. yeah and are they free or do you have to pay for them unity is free but if you I, I guess if you want to publish and you have, uh, I don't know how many sales, but I think then you have some um, some fees you have to pay. And Vuforia is, you have to pay as well, right? Yes. If you do it for yourself, not. If you want to publish, yes. Yeah, you can see on the, uh, on the, the bottom left screen, it always says Vuforia, the watermark because this is why we are using the free version. And if we paid for Horia because we want to publish an application, then the watermark mm. would get removed. Mm. Mm. And this uh, game engine uh, Unity, is it easy to, um, easy to learn? Um, well, I guess it depends on uh, how much you enjoy programming and computer stuff in general. Um, yeah, you can start um, very quickly. So the learning curve is uh, very, um, 
it's uh, you can start easy and have uh, great success in only a few hours. So like we showed the small application with the Foria SDK, you can do this in mm. two to three hours, um, even without uh, a lot of prior knowledge. But then for some mm. uh, harder concepts, yeah, you have to uh, work and learn the documentation a bit more. And but there might be some tutorials as well to help you. Yeah, there are many tutorials, and I think also the the community around Unity is really big. So you have a lot yeah. of like yeah forums on the on the internet, and yeah. Yeah, um, it's one of the biggest uh, game engines. Uh, Unity and Unreal are the two biggest ones, mm. which uh, means a lot of users, which means a lot of questions get asked and answered. So you can Google a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, last question here on the in the chat: um, Is it possible to integrate some animations? Uh, yes, of course. That's what we did for the Sun Hunters and the Tortoise book. So when you scanned the page uh, and, and like the characters were animated, but uh, mm. animations are a bit harder to do. So it takes some time, unfortunately. So mm. this uh, was a bit too much for only uh, our talk here, mm. but yes, you can do it. And from the, from the hard copies side, what, what do you need? Can you do that with a normal tablet? Do you need, do you need uh, a laptop or computer, or can you do it also with your smartphone itself? So, yeah, you mean Unity or no to work? No, no to work with that uh, with a project like that. Uh, um, no, you need a computer. It can't run on a mobile device. Mm, mm. But uh, you also would not want that because you need to type a lot of scripts, and that would be very okay. hard on a smartphone or okay. tablet. Okay. Yeah. Any special recommendations for the computer itself or no, just for, uh, for a simple uh, application like this, it's not necessary to have like a very powerful one, but if mm. you have bigger projects and like, yeah, more textures and yeah, then you need uh, probably a more powerful one. Mm. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I just checked the questions in the check. Uh, check the questions in the Q and R. Um, so at the moment, yeah, but there is. I see there is also Halvi on with us. Um, maybe if she is if she is ready, I give her the right the, the, the mic to open her mic. Maybe she can give some. Uh, feedback about what what you have done or some questions even. Okay. Helvi, good morning. Hi, morning, Beatrice. Oh, so sorry, I had another meeting. I just joined now. I missed. Did I miss already? Oh, that's. I didn't see when you joined, but okay. so did. But did you see uh, some of the effects of? Did you join just at the end when we had the Q and R session? I just joined, unfortunately. Mm, okay, but that's not a problem. We will mm -hmm. show that um, we, we, we will um, we recorded it, and okay. we will publish it um, during. Uh, I hope it will be ready during next week or maybe in two weeks time, then all the contents uh -huh. of the conference will be available on our website and then you can see it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's not a problem. But there were some people, they asking where we can buy the book and that, and that he is, yeah. Oh, we um, have it. <laughs> <laughs> where must they go to? Okay, um, they can contact at the moment. They can contact us while we put it in the shops. Um, mm -hmm. Should I put I put my email address here? Is it? Uh, can I? I can share my email address here, right? Is it mm -hmm. everyone or to who now? Mm, yeah, it's everyone. I also put a link to our cloud uh, so you can download the app and try it for yourself, Helvi. It was very fun working with your book. Mm. Oh. Thank you so much. I, but I can't see the link because I just joined. It was posted before I came in. 
Uh, no, I just put it now, like one minute ago. Really? Uh, I only sent it to the host and discussion. Okay, let's send it to everyone. Okay, now I think it's sent to everyone. I think I only yeah. sent that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing the um, the the app. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, if you have any feedback where, or any wishes, let us know. Yeah, where are you from right now? Where are you based? Uh, Berlin, Germany. Oh, okay. We were in Windhoek last week, but unfortunately, we had to go to another conference here. Oh, okay. I wish you contacted me when you were here. <laughs> Sorry. It's it was okay. a bit, uh, stressful. Next time. Short term yeah. notice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, thank you. Well, we have your details in and people, they would like to buy the book, they can then contact you. And I thank think um, apart from that, I mentioned already, it's available mostly in all, in, in a lot of bookstores, um, especially at the book market as well. Yeah. Um, so this, Augmented reality um, is actually, we can use it not only for books uh, or for children books. Uh, you made other interesting uh, project with the QR, uh, with the um, AR, um, like, um, I remember, didn't you do something also for lodges in Namibia? Uh, yeah, we the year before we did the living uh, children's books, we were at different lodges, for example, on Yala Lodge, uh, Corona mm. Guest Farm, Kristallkellerei, and uh, some others yeah. all spread out through Namibia, which was uh, very cool for the students to get, um, mm. yeah, we could uh, go to such lodges. And we um, augmented marketing flyers for them. So they said, okay, we would like to show, for example, on Onyala, they wanted to show their planetarium in their marketing stuff. Mm. So wow. put information about the planetarium in the marketing brochure via augmented reality, which was really mm -hmm. fun. Mm. Okay. Ah, and uh, Jürgen wants me to mention, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, for example, at Corona Guest Farm, we did a really cool uh, Namibian recipe book because at Corona Guest Farm, there is Annemarie and Christina who are amazing cooks. And uh, they kindly shared some recipes with us. And uh, yeah, we put the recipes into a book and using augmented reality, you can see them cook the recipes and uh, yeah, tell us something about the recipes, which yeah, was a really cool project. So meaning they had a small flyer for the, uh, for the lodge that people mm -hmm. can buy or give them to the guests. And when they put their smartphone yes. on a page, then the the tv cook appeared uh, yeah that, in the case like of corona guest farm we actually printed yeah. uh, a book ourselves so we made a oh, book okay. and that we brought that to them and uh, yeah but for the other lodges it was a marketing player yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> great interesting yeah, who wants to share something yeah that left, you have some copies of the book in your library mm -hmm. yes we do yeah we have i i I know, I remember, and even sometimes yeah. I'm checking the receipts and how to braai for those they are not living in Namibia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have them, thank you. Um, so what is what are your future projects? Can you give us a little bit an idea what are you working in the next months or yeah, your next projects? Is there anything also, um, some project with a Namibian context, maybe in the future, or what are, what are your plans? Uh, unfortunately, currently not. I mean, we had one coding week roughly a year, but then, uh, yeah, we all know what then came, <laughs> the big word with C. Mm. So uh, yeah, we could not plan a um, coding week during this Corona time, but hopefully it will be possible again, starting next year or the year after. Mm. 
But uh, for now, I mean, you know yourself, planning events is uh, mm. kind of a hassle, but you want to add something. Yeah, uh, that left there are some good news and hopefully in the future are some better news. Mm -hmm. um, we are just working on a project, Women in STEM. Okay. And uh, the, the partners in the project that is from the German side, the Humboldt University, the Cluster of Excellence, and the University of Applied Science. And in Africa, that is the University of Cape Town, UCT, and the NAS, the Namibia University of Science and Technology. And the main topic of that collaboration, young female scientists in STEM, is augmented and virtual reality. So we are just now in the definition phase. And if we are successful, then uh, we can uh, run the project for uh, three or four years. So uh, the, the German Ministry of Science and Education uh, selected 15 different networks. We are one of them. And at the end, they will select uh, 10 networks to finance the project. And we hope that we are under the 10 and not between uh, 11 and 15. So, and if that uh, becomes true, that we are, uh, we will be selected, then of course we continue from 2020 to 2024, five. So please cross the fingers. Yes, we will do, but that's good news actually. We just have to wait and cross our fingers for the results. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Elisabeth uh, and Sophie and Jürgen Sieg, is there anything you would like to add? I don't see any questions anymore in the in the chat. Uh, anything no. you would like to add? No. <laughs> right now, but uh, yeah, if you have any questions or AR ideas, <laughs> you can of course contact us and let us know. But for now, thank you for the invitation to speak here, Detlef, and uh, also yeah. for inviting us last week. No, I thank you very much for for what you've done, what you've showed us to give us an an overview how that how that work, what you really do inside. And you didn't show only the results. You we, we could have a look how that programming works uh, live, even when you sort out some mistakes. <laughs> okay. Then um, I thank you very much again. And um, as everybody knows, they followed us. They will be um, soon a, a record of this uh, presentation available on our website. So, and we're coming to our last event of the conference at 11.30 Namibian time. Uh, with the title Preserve Indigenous, Preserve Namibia Indigenous Knowledge. And that seems to be a very interesting uh, subject, a very interesting project. The project investigates methods to be used in uh, documenting Indigenous knowledge in a do it yourself approach by involving local community members to explain it sounds very interesting and we'll see um, from the speaker uh, miss hamotenia nawalwa um, what it is about okay that's all for this morning for our first session and thank you very much for for joining and see you as maybe at the next and the last session Thank you very much and bye bye. Bye bye.